In this video, we're going to have a look at general invariant lines under a matrix transformation. Now, in a previous video, we've already looked at lines of invariant points. And general invariant lines are a slight extension on this. So first of all, let's look at what an uh, invariant line actually is. So as I said before, when I refer to an invariant line, it could be a line of invariant points, like that which I showed you earlier in a previous video. So just a quick, uh, quick recap of that. So let's draw, say, a reflection in the line y equals x. So any point, for example, here, will be reflected to the opposite side of the line, say roughly there. But anything lying on the mirror line, when reflected, would just stay where it is. Every single point on that line would stay where it is, meaning it's a line of invariant points, i.e. on that line, none of the points move. So now, thinking more generally, let's have a look at just a general invariant line. So let's consider any line perpendicular to that red dotted line. For example, this one here. That's meant to be perpendicular, so I'll just emphasize that. There's a right angle there. There's a right angle there. So this point here, when reflected, does move. Moves roughly there. Perpendicular distance equal to what it was before it was reflected. So that point gets reflected from there to there. How about looking at a different point? Let's have a look at this one here. Well, this one would end up here, gets reflected from there to there. And the points are clearly not invariant because the points are moving. However, the line itself remains intact. So any point on that line will be reflected to remain on that line. So this line here, when reflected, even though the points move, the line itself remains intact. And that's what a general invariant line is. And we can see, under that definition, any line with gradient minus 1 will be an invariant line in a reflection through the line y equals x. So let's have a look at that now. Let's have a look at that in more depth. So say my question was to verify that y equals minus x plus c is an invariant line under a reflection through the line y equals x. So answering this requires you to know the matrix that represents a reflection through the line y equals x. Well, we swap the x and y coordinates. So initially, this entry in the matrix would be 1, 0. But if we swap the x and y coordinates, it becomes 0, 1. This entry here would be 0, 1. But if we swap the x and y coordinates, it becomes 1, 0. So there's our reflection matrix. So 0, 1, 1, 0. And we're saying that when we apply that, to the line, any point on the line y equals minus x plus c. So this is the x coordinate, and the y coordinate is minus x plus c. Then we get some image of these points, which I'm going to call x dash y dash for now. So the dash just means the image. So we'll go back to what that means in a little while. So let's actually multiply out this matrix now. So we get no x plus 1 lot of minus x plus c gives us the top coordinate. So this x dash, the top one, equals 0 times x plus 1 times minus x plus c, which is equal to minus x plus c. The y coordinate of our image, y dash, is equal to 1 times x plus 0 times minus x plus c. So y dash equals 1 times x, which is just x. Right, so what we need to do now is try and prove that all the points on in, uh, that are the image actually lie on the line y equals minus x plus c also. So we can do that. 
So need to prove that the image of the y coordinate is equal to negative the image of the x coordinate plus c. So the y coordinate is indeed made up by multiplying by minus 1 the image of the x coordinate, then adding c, then it has to lie on that line. So let's try that now. So we've got that y dash equals x. It says so there. So let's now try and find minus x dash plus c and see if they're the same. So minus x dash, well it's minus what we're told that x dash is. So minus minus x plus c plus c. So there's your minus x dash, there it is there, then there's plus c there, equals, we can see that that's x takes c plus c equals x, which indeed does equal y dash. So I've got, through this chain of equal signs, that y dash equals minus x dash plus c, therefore, the line y equals minus x plus c is invariant under a reflection through the line y equals x. So that's how to verify that a line is invariant under a given transformation, but it's much more difficult to actually find the invariant lines when you're given no more information under a linear transformation. So let's have a look at a question like that now. Let's have a look at an example where you're required to find the invariant lines from scratch. So, finding the form y equals mx plus c, the invariant lines of the linear transformation represented by this following matrix. Okay, so let's have a look at this one here. The matrix is 7, 24, 24, minus 7. And what I want is for 7, 24, 24, minus 7, when applied to some straight line, so there's the x-coordinate, and the y-coordinate is mx plus c. And I want to get some image, x dash and y dash. I'm not worrying about the y equals mx plus c part for now. I just want to find the image and deal with that later. So, multiplying the matrix out, I get 7x plus 24 mx plus c equals x dash. And I get 24x minus 7 lots of mx plus c equals y dash. So now this line truly is invariant, then when I perform the matrix transformation, the image should also be of the form y equals mx plus c. So that's y dash equals mx dash plus c. If the line truly is invariant, then you'll get the image being of that form also. So let's try and do that now. So let's try y dash, which is 24x minus 7 mx plus c. So y dash equals m times x dash, which is 7x plus 24 mx plus c plus c. So y dash equals m x dash plus c. So let's simplify that a bit. So we've got 24x minus 7mx minus 7c equals 7mx plus 24m mx plus c plus c. And here we've got 24x minus 7mx minus 7c equals 7mx plus 24m squared x plus 24mc plus c. 
So let's simplify that a little bit. So I've got on this side, in fact, let's take everything over now to the right hand side. So let's get it zero on the left hand side. Let's take all of those terms over. So zero equals. So I've got a 7mx there, which is negative and a 7mx there, which is positive. So if I add 7mx over there, I get 14mx. So I'll just put a little tick under those, so I don't forget that I've already de dealt with those. If I take the 7c over to that side, I get plus 8c. Yeah, dealt with those. And I'll take the 24x over, um, becomes take 24x. Yeah, dealt with that one. Plus 24m squared x, yeah, plus 24mc. So we've got all the terms on one side. Now let's gather up all the terms that have an x in them. So 0 equals, so take out x as a factor. So I've got the m squared first, so 24m squared plus 14m plus or rather, minus 24. That's those dealt with. Then just gather out the C's, plus C. And we've got 8 plus 24M. So, this is equal to 0, if and only if. This bit's equal to 0, here. And this bit's equal to 0 as well. So both, we need both this to be equal to zero and that to be equal to zero. So let's set this equal to zero. So for this first one to be equal to zero, either x equals zero or this here equals zero. So either x equals zero or 24m squared plus 14m minus 24 equals 0. So let's take a shortcut and get the calculator to solve that quadratic in M. So 24m squared, 14m and minus 24. So we've got either m equals 3 quarters or m equals minus 4 thirds. Right, so that's one condition sorted. So we need either this to be true or this to be true. However, we also need, so and another thing needs to be true. So here, solving this, either c equals naught, or 8 plus 24m equals naught, which means that 24m equals minus 8 which means that m equals minus one third. So basically, we need something from this bracket to be true and something from this bracket to be true. So let's do a little table of the possibilities. So this bracket here, I'm gonna to refer to as the yellow bracket. And this one here, we'll call the blue bracket. So the yellow bracket is going to be here and the blue bracket conditions I'm going to put here. So I want one condition from the yellow bracket to be true and one condition from the blue bracket to be true for both brackets here and here to equal zero. So let's say now that from the yellow bracket where we've got the conditions x equals zero We've got m equals 3 quarters, and we've got m equals minus 4 thirds, three conditions there, and we need one of those to be true. 
along with one of the blue conditions to be true. So here we've got C equals zero, or we've got M equals minus one third. So let's have a look at this here. So C equals zero and X equals zero. Well, actually, that's just the point zero zero being invariant. So this is what the, this is what this says here. Y equal if X equals zero and the invariant line equals zero, Y equals MX plus C. The only point that satisfies that is zero zero. So that's what this one tells us that zero zero is invariant. So when C equals naught and M equals three quarters, well, that's telling us that Y equals three quarters X is invariant. Likewise, when C equals zero and M equals minus four thirds, that's telling us that Y equals minus four thirds X is invariant. Okay, so X equals naught and M equals minus a third. Well, using a similar argument before, that one's just telling us that 0, 0 is invariant. And the two most interesting conditions now. So, m equals 3 quarters and m equals minus a third. Well, they're contradictory. The gradient of a line can't be both 3 quarters and minus a third at the same time. And a similar argument for these ones. So, basically, to find the invariant lines... Well, this is an invariant line. This is just a single invariant point. So we're going to ignore those. It doesn't fulfill the criteria of the question. But therefore, y equals 3 quarters x is invariant. And y equals minus 4 thirds x is also invariant. Now, there might be just general invariant lines, all lines of invariant points, we don't know yet. We'd have to actually go through the line of invariant points method to check whether they both are, but I've fulfilled the criteria of the question here. I've just found the invariant lines. Now, again, there might be general invariant lines or there might be lines of invariant points. However, we don't know that yet. But that's the method. And to get familiar with this takes a lot of practice. So what I suggest you do is have a look at my exam questions that I've put on my, on my website, alevelmathsrevision.com, and make sure that you follow those questions through, but keeping these notes to one side, keeping this video to one side, just keep looking, comparing what I've done to what the question's asking you to do, keep referring back until eventually you'll get good enough at it to be able to do it without any safety net. So go on, give it a go. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel and to find out more about our Skype tuition and revision courses, go to alevelmathsrevision.com.